Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sham Story Time. My name is Shamala, and I'm a passionate storyteller. Today, we will listen to the next story in the series, King Vikramaditya. Are you all ready to listen? So, Boja Raja went back to his chambers, and then the next morning, he got ready and came to climb the throne to Vikramaditya. As he put his step on the 11th step, the puppet there stopped him and said, her name was Kanakabhishekavalli. Do you think you're worthy of sitting on this throne? It asked him the same question. Bojaraja said, can you please tell me the story of Vikramaditya? I'm waiting to hear it. So Kanakabhishekavalli, the puppet, went on. Today's story is called The Damsel in Distress. One day to the court of King Vikramaditya, a great artisan came. He had a big wooden horse. The wooden horse looked exactly like a real horse. The artisan demonstrated all the things that this wooden horse can do. One can even climb on top of this and gallop like how a real horse would do. There were many knobs on its face using which the rider can give different directions to the horse. But one thing the artisan told the king was that you should not whip the horse at all. If you do that, you will end up in trouble. Saying so, the artisan asked King Vikramaditya if he would like to buy it. Vikramaditya said, of course, I would like to buy it. So he gave him a large sum as a reward and bought the wooden horse. It was kept in the stable along with the other horses for very many days. After some time, one day suddenly Vikramaditya remembered about it and asked his men to bring the horse. The men brought the horse. Vikramaditya wanted to have a ride in it. So he got on top of the horse. He remembered all the adjustments of the knobs and he rode it for a very long distance. But forgetfully, Vikramaditya whipped the horse once. Because of which, suddenly he fell down from the horse and did not know which place it was. He looked around. It was like a deep forest. Vikramaditya did not even know where he was. He looked around and started to walk within the depths of the forest. Suddenly, out of nowhere, he noticed that there was a big house. Vikramaditya hid behind a tree. He wanted to find out whose house it was. That too in the middle of the forest. Vikramaditya also noticed that there were two wells just outside of the house. As he was looking at it, he could not see any people there. So there was one lone monkey which was running around outside of this house. As Vikramaditya was seeing, night was approaching and suddenly out of nowhere came a monster. The monster looked gory, it had sharp teeth from which blood was dripping. The monster even had long nails. It came near the monkey. The monster fetched some water from the first well and sprinkled on the monkey. Lo and behold, the monkey turned into a beautiful damsel. Then the monster and the damsel went inside the house. They did not come out at all the whole night. Vikramaditya lay in wait to see who they were. The next morning, both of them came out. The monster fetched some water from the second well and sprinkled it on this damsel. She turned into a monkey once again. The monster went his way. Vikramaditya was absolutely perplexed. He did not understand the magic behind it. Who is this monkey? Who is this lady? Who is this monster? He wanted to know. Vikramaditya waited for some more time to make sure that the monster has really left. He approached the monkey. In the same manner, Vikramaditya fetched some water from the first well and sprinkled it on the monkey. It turned into a damsel, the same lady. Vikramaditya asked her, what is happening? How did you end up here in the middle of the forest and who is this monster? This lady started to cry like anything and told Vikramaditya, thank you so much for asking me this question. I have not seen any human being for such a long time. Vikramaditya asked her, what is your story? How did you end up here? Please tell me, I am here to help you. Then the damsel started to tell her story. She said that she was the daughter of a very poor peasant. One day, suddenly out of nowhere, this monster came and told the father that he wants to take away the daughter and marry her. Her father had told the monster, please don't do anything to my daughter. The monster did not listen, killed the poor peasant and then abducted this little girl. The monster had brought her to this forest and made her to live in this house. 
The monster turned her into a monkey during the daytime and at night she would be turned once again into a damsel and the monster would torture her at night. This lady cried to Vikramaditya and told him to somehow save her from the monster. Vikramaditya said, don't you worry, I will be here tonight and I will fight the monster and kill him. The damsel said, please don't do that. You don't know about this monster. He is extremely powerful. He might even kill you. I don't want you to lose your life just because of me. Both of us can escape from here before the monster comes or you just go away. I will just face my fate in the way it is right now. The lady said, Vikramaditya took pity on her. He told her that he was a great king of the nearby kingdom and she need not fear anything. So somehow Vikramaditya convinced this lady that he would wait there. And just as expected, that night once again the monster came. Vikramaditya fought with the monster. It was a terrible fight. The monster got even more furious when he knew that Vikramaditya is already spoken to the damsel. And at the end of the fight, the monster was killed by Vikramaditya. Then he told the damsel, come, I will take you. Where do you want to go? The lady said, I don't have a place to go. Vikramaditya told her, don't you worry. I will take you to my kingdom of Ujjain and you can live a very happy life there. So Vikramaditya summoned his Vethal. His Vethal came and fetched the king and the damsel. Both of them flew to the kingdom of Ujjain. And as King Vikramaditya promised her, she led a very happy life. Saying so, the puppet Kanakabhishekavalli on the 11th step talked and asked Boja Raja, do you think you're worthy enough to sit on this throne? Look at the great deeds of King Vikramaditya. He had saved not one or two, so many people, so many innocent lives like this. What have you done in your life? Asked Boja Raja has always hung his head down. By then it was also dusk. He said, okay, I will go back to my chambers and he retired. Did he come the next day? Did he listen to any more stories of Vikramaditya? You have to wait for the next episode. I hope you liked today's story. If you did, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Sham Story Time. You will have access to all the stories I upload. Every week you get to hear two stories. One in English on Vikramaditya and another in Tamil on a Panchatantra tale. My name is Shamala and I'm a passionate storyteller. I will meet you in the next episode. Bye-bye.